Well, everybody, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's good to be together with you this morning. And uh, last Sunday, as I think you guys were probably aware, I was I was ministering at another one of our Foursquare churches here in the Bay Area. I was with our our Foursquare family in San Francisco last Sunday, and it was just great to be with them. One of our senior pastors up there um, had a, uh, a medical procedure, and so they were out for about a week and asked if I'd come in, and man, I had a great time with that, but I know that you guys had an amazing Sunday last, last Sunday here as well. And last Sunday, what we did is we kicked off our, our November series entitled More Than Enough, and as we were kind of thinking and praying about how the Lord would direct us for November, uh, this theme really uh, just, I think, just perfectly encapsulated our heart is that we would just be reminded um, that we serve a God that is more than enough. Amen? How many know when you have Jesus, you have everything you need? Do you believe that? Well, if not, I'm going to convince you by the end of the service today. I'm going <laughs> to do my best. Uh, all month, we've been really opening up our heart to another level of thanksgiving, of gratitude, of contentment, appreciation for who God is and, and all that he has done for us. And our hope is that as we examine these characteristics, these behaviors, these, these feelings, these responses, that we will begin to see God in our own lives in a new and hopeful way. Amen? I believe that, that the seeds of thanksgiving, the seed of gratitude, the seed of contentment, the seed of appreciation, they bear good fruit. Do you believe that? Amen, right? What are the other things that, that, we, that we see in our world, in our society, that would compete against what God wants to do? We see envy. We see strife, right? We see judgment. We see criticism. We see um, jealousy. We, we, we see a lack of contentment. We, we see those kind of things, right, that I think battle against what God really wants to do in our hearts. As we, We're going to look this morning at gratitude, so I'm going to invite you to turn over your brand new announcement sheet. You see that we have a new design for our announcement sheet, a new logo, a new layout, lots of fun things that are going on. But I want you to turn that over, grab your pen, and uh, we're going to talk about gratitude today. Everybody say gratitude. gratitude. Everybody say an attitude of gratitude. gratitude. Amen. I think that there are two things that uh, I want to identify as we just as we get started this morning about gratitude. And there are really ways I think that we can define what gratitude is. One, gratitude at its core is appreciation. Appreciation. Being grateful involves feelings and emotions uh, in a moment of appreciation for someone or something. Would you agree with that? Appreciation. But I wanna, I wanna just build off of that just for a moment to encourage you that to truly cultivate a heart of gratitude, those feelings must become a practice. I shared this with our, our mobile team this morning in our team prayer. Is what I believe that God's desire for us is that, yeah, it's great that we have feelings of appreciation, that we have moments where, where that's part of our emotional response to what someone has done for us or our recognition of who God is or something that happens great in our life. But my encouragement for us today is that gratitude would move beyond feelings into a value system. Because as the people of God, whether you recognize it or not on any given day, you are a blessed people. We are a blessed people, right? And so I believe for gratitude to become a behavior and not just a feeling, for gratitude to become a value and not just an emotion is what's going to take us to the next level of not only seeing but fully experiencing all that God has done in our lives. Truly grateful people demonstrate their appreciation as a value and a practice. That is, they choose to make conscious efforts to count their blessings. It's a choice that we make. Where we don't just leave it to coincidence. Because the reality is every morning when breath fills our lungs, we are a blessed people. It doesn't mean we don't have hardship and it doesn't mean that our difficulties aren't real. They are. But so are our blessings. So are 
the things that God has done and is doing and will yet do that he's promised to do in our lives, those are just as real, amen? So studies have shown that people can deliberately cultivate gratitude, and I, I believe that we should. How about you? That we would be deliberate about cultivating a heart of gratitude. So appreciation is the first part. The second part of gratitude that I want to identify is awareness. Gratitude is an ability to look around and see the good. Are you able to do that? And, and it's okay if you're not right now. But I believe that this is God's heart for us. That we have the ability to look around and see the good around us. And to recognize fundamentally that these blessings have been freely given to us. If you think about it, it's really in the word, right? Gratitude, the root of that word is gratis in the Latin, which means free, free, a gift. So we see that gratitude is, is, is there's a direct correlation to not only our, our feeling, our emotion, a behavior of gratitude, but a daily awareness to be able to look around. And sometimes we got to fight through. Sometimes we need to still wipe out the, the goobers in our eyes, right? Emotionally, spiritually, mentally, to be able to see clearly the blessings that are all around us every day. Do you know people like this? I do. I have, I have people like this in my life. They're very annoying at times. <laughs> I, I, I guess I'm honestly envious that they have the capacity to see the good around them, even in the midst of difficulty. They just have this ability. And I don't think it's by accident, and I'm not sure that it's just something they were born with. I think that there's somehow, they identified something, even from an early age, like that's a value. That's going to be an absolute point of power and breakthrough for the rest of my life. And so I'm going to cultivate not only a feeling and an emotion, but a behavior that's based upon the awareness that God has been good, is good, and will be good to me. Amen? The ability to see the good around us. I want to cultivate a heart of gratitude. How about you? I want to cultivate a heart of gratitude because I do truly believe, I know in my heart, I know in my mind, I, it resonates in my spirit that God is only good and he has been good to me. Friends, I wanna encourage you today that I, I, I believe that gratitude opens our hearts to see and feel the weight and the scope of God's love and blessing. In such a way, this is something that came to me this week. I'd never really thought about it this way before. But I believe that there is an ability as we press in and as we are aware of and recognizing the goodness and the blessing of God, that there's, there's another level of connection to even eternity that God wants to reveal to us. There's another level of connectedness to heaven, to the fact that God is the great I am, right? The beginning and the end, he is sovereign. He is good, he is just, he is, he is gracious, he's compassionate, amen? We connect to the eternal things that are really the most important things about who we are and what's waiting for us on the other side of this life, and I believe that's abundance. Do you know there is zero lack in heaven? Never has, never will. Could I encourage you with this today? And again, this is faith. Turn to your neighbor and say, get ready. This is faith. This is faith. Faith is, right, is, is being even confident, right? Confident of things that we don't yet see or hold, right? The kingdom of God is not a kingdom of scarcity, The kingdom of God is not a kingdom of scarcity. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of abundance. And that doesn't mean abundance the way the world says abundance. See, when we think about 
what it really means to be blessed. When we acknowledge, for example, the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes, blessed are you and blessed are you when this and that and the other thing happens to you. God isn't just talking about material blessing. He's not just talking about financial provision. All of those things God absolutely promises to provide for us. He is Jehovah Jireh. He's talking about living in the reality of the kingdom of God that is a kingdom of abundance, friends. Abundance is actually all around us, even within us, if we will tap into it. And I believe that gratitude is a key that unlocks abundance, not just for us, so that, but as well that we would be free and open-handed in generosity to other people in every area. The abundance of God is, yes, provision. The abundance of God is grace and mercy and love and joy. The abundance of God is peace. It's all around us. It's inside us by the Holy Spirit. It's in the word of God. It's in God's presence that we enter into. And so we've got to get rid of this scarcity mindset. And I'm not talking about a prosperity gospel. This has nothing to do with that. This is the, this is the truth of the word of God. When, when the Bible says that he owns a cattle on a thousand hills, that's, that's just a scratch in the surface of what is available to us. Do you know that you serve a limitless king? Say that. I serve a limitless king. Gratitude unlocks that truth in our hearts. It opens our hearts. It expands our hearts to feel and to receive, but also to give to give out of the abundance of the kingdom. We don't have to live, we don't have to live with a white knuckle in any area of our life because the kingdom of God is a kingdom of abundance and we serve a limitless king. And your heart and my heart, everybody listen, your heart and my heart were designed by God to carry the treasures of the kingdom of God like a vessel, right? I, I think of it like a beautiful, majestic ship Right, And our lives are that ship, and we were designed by God to carry the blessing and the treasure and the grace and the message of the gospel. And guess what gratitude is? Gratitude is our willingness to pull up the sails and say, okay, God, let's do this. Take me where you want me to go. Show me what you want me to see. Use me in a powerful way. I don't want those treasures just to be something that I think are buried down below the deck. But I want to live in the fullness of your kingdom. Amen? Gratitude opens up the sails so that we can soar again, family. There's been so many studies. I've done a lot of uh, reading and study into um, this concept of gratitude. And, and the studies have been shown and proved for very, a very long time that gratitude increases patience. Right? The more grateful we are, the more patient we are. Gratitude decreases depression. Gratitude replenishes willpower. Gratitude reduces stress, right? The next time that we are at a point of, of difficulty or challenge, what if, we just, what if we just decided in that moment that, it, it, again, this is not denial. This is real faith. I mean, no, faith is real. That when we come into that moment, that we can make a decision, we can choose for a moment to, to just set that aside for a second, even though it's still there, and choose gratitude. And just in that moment, what if that happened the next time that you were faced with a difficulty? What if that happened the next time that you were offended by your spouse, or by your coworker, or by a complete stranger? or that you are frustrated or, or angry or anxious about something that's going on in the culture of the society around you, that, that we turn down the volume of that, of that, whatever that is, that force, and took 30 seconds to give God some crazy praise. Took 30 seconds to even maybe just jot down five things that we're thankful for right now. Maybe five things that we're thankful for about that person that we can't really stand, but we're going to, in faith, choose to recognize that that is not the sum total of who they are. And that, and that thing that's going on in my world right now is not the end of the story because I've read the end of the book and we win. 
And I'm going to choose to be grateful for what I have. Amen? I'm going to choose to, to, to battle with my praise. Do you know that the word gratitude, the word appreciation, one of the definitions is actually praise. I'm going to fight my battles with my praise, with my thanksgiving. Amen? First Thessalonians 5.16 says, Rejoice always. Pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I want to tell you this morning that our, our, our passion, our, our commitment, the intentionality around this series and the message this morning around gratitude is not just because it's advisable because of the studies and what they show us, but because it's Bible. It's Bible. And the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It's the foundation upon which our lives are built. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is good. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. 30, Deuteronomy 32, 4 says, He is the rock, his works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. So I want to focus for a few moments this morning upon God's faithfulness. Because it's something that I am profoundly grateful for. Anybody else thankful for the faithfulness of God? I want, to, I want to focus a little bit on this. I want us to take our eyes off the things that are, might be going on around us, and I want us to do what I just recommended that we do, and I want us to set our eyes upon God just for a moment and just really to be able to admire and appreciate him, to praise him, to adore him with a heart of gratitude. Amen. Are you with me? Say amen. We sang it this morning. This is my testimony, Right From death to life, grace rewrote my story. Anybody else, grace rewrote your story. How many are, are, are fully aware this morning of where you would be without Jesus? We have so much to be grateful for. So I want to share with you three things that just have been in my heart this week that I, I, I'm reflecting on, that I'm grateful for today. And that is that, number one, God is faithful in his promises. Write that down. God is faithful in his promises. God, at his, at his core, his character, he is a promise keeper. I love what Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we for profess, for he who promised is faithful. If the last 20 months or so have taught us anything, it's that there's not a lot around us that we can really count on, right? Circumstances, comfort zones, familiarity, right? Sometimes even people. But we can confidently put our hope in God because he is faithful to every promise. When others have let us down, God picks us up. Amen? When life happens to us, God is faithful. I know I could go around this room. We could stop it right now and just do a testimony service because I'm looking around and I have the privilege as your pastor to know a lot of your stories. And the bottom line is that even if you don't feel it right now, I'm here to remind you, right? I'm here to spur you on because I know your story and I know how God has been faithful to you and you know how God has been faithful to me. Somebody say amen. Amen. Second Corinthians 1 verse 20 says, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. He can't make too many promises because he's the only one that's able to keep them all. And so through him, the amen, so be it, is spoken by us to the glory of God. God has always been faithful. He is only faithful. Amen? He's been faithful to me. If he's been faithful to you, raise your hand this morning. He has never left you. He never will. He has forgiven you of all of your sins, past, present, and future. That is done. The work of the cross is complete. Some of you, like me, had a rough start in life and then maybe compounded that with some foolish decisions along the way. But God never changed his mind about me and he has not changed his mind about you. Amen. Amen. In Joshua 
23, verse 14. Joshua is kind of at the end of his life and he's bringing kind of a declaration to the, to the people to encourage them, to remind them, kind of like maybe I'm doing today. I know that what I'm, I'm sharing with you this morning may not necessarily be any profound revelation. Sometimes we just need to be reminded of what we already know, right? So we can actually walk it out, amen? So this is what Joshua says, chapter 23, verse 14. He says, now I am about to go the way of all the earth, you know with all your heart and soul that not one of all the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. Could I encourage you today that the promises of God are yes and amen. He is faithful. And so I've said this to you many times before because this is really, this is, core value in my life. If what you see right now is not the fulfillment of the promise that God has spoken to you by his word, by his spirit, by a message, by a brother and sister in Christ, then what you see right now is temporary because God is faithful. How many are there? Be honest with me to say, Pastor, I feel like I'm in, the, I'm in the messy middle right now. There's a lot of promises that I'm believing God for and I don't see the fulfillment of that anywhere around me. That's okay, friends. But I want to encourage you to know this, that what you see right now is temporary. Because either we believe the word of God or not. Right? The word of God says, as I just shared it with you in 2 Corinthians 1, no matter how many the promises of God are, they are yes in Christ. And so what is our response to that yes? And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. We align our faith with the promise of the word of God to say, Lord, even though I don't see it right now, I believe for it because I believe in you. I don't have to know how you're gonna do it because I trust your character. I don't have to know how, but I just know you and I know that you are faithful, God. Number two, God is faithful in his provision. I could just speak for our church and, I, and I, I thank you for, church family, for those of us that call the Bridge Your Home Church online or with us in person this morning that have been faithful even over the last 20 months of a lot of financial uncertainty. You've been faithful with your tithes and offerings, but can I tell you, God has been faithful in his provision to our church. I mean, even the fact that we have had this, this ballroom and the convene ballroom and we were out in the courtyard for a minute, but the fact that we had a place to be able to gather and worship together and fellowship together, amen? God is worthy of praise. Come on, Sandy, lead him in a clap offering. <laughs> amen. Man, I've learned I don't always have everything I want, but I always have what I need. I've learned to trust God's sovereignty in my life. I've learned to trust in his provision. How many raise their hand to say this morning, God has been faithful to me financially this year. He's been faithful to provide and take care of me this year. Amen. You guys know, you guys know I grew up in, in, in church. I grew up in a pastor's home. And there were many times where we used to say we had a lot more month than money. Right? We were wonder why we were broke because we still had checks. I'll let that just sit out there for a second. I know that's just lost on anybody, you know, under 30 years old. You don't, do y'all know what a check is, yeah. right? Okay, I digress. Malachi 3.10 says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And I wanna just, just briefly pause there for a moment to, to just encourage us as a family that we would even align our faithfulness with God's faithfulness. Right? Because God honors faith. And sometimes we wonder why things may be really difficult or we're, cha we're challenged right now financially or struggling financially. And I just would encourage you are, are, are you in alignment with what I've just shared with you? Are we in alignment with bringing the whole tithe into the storehouse? Are we taking God on his test? Are we taking him at his word? 
Because if you're not, you're never gonna fully understand the, the open heaven financially over your life. That's, I, I'm sorry if that comes across harsh. I don't mean it to sound that way at all. I'm preaching to myself. I'm preaching from, from 54 years of watching this, even before I could make a dime, to, to the last, you know, however many years of adult life and a wife and family and kids and grandbabies now. That God invites us into another level of his provision. But the fullness of God's provision is never going to be fully recognized in our life unless we are faithful with the, the, this, basic, this basic starting line obedience that he's called us to. It's all his. And he wants to reveal that to us by greater and more abundant provision in our lives. What I read for you in 2 Corinthians 9, 8 about how God is able to bless us abundantly so that all things at all times, having all that we need will abound in every good work. That comes just after the passage that says, give from a cheerful heart, not out of compulsion, what you've decided to give. And again, I just think it's one of these moments where God's inviting us into more. How many want more? How many are ready for the more that God has? This is not a kingdom of scarcity, family. And gratitude is the foundation for generosity. Amen. God is calling us to a new place of faithfulness. And God has been faithful to provide for you. God is calling you now to be that person of influence and impact in those around you. That we would tell the story of his faithfulness. Right? That we would tell the story of it. That we would put him first place in our life. Our first and our best. Number three, God is faithful in his purposes. We sang about this all morning. We sang about this all morning. God, when I doubt it, remind me I'm wonderfully made, right? I'm wonderfully made. My, my life is in your hands. Lord, you are the artist. You are the, you are the, the potter. I'm, I'm, I'm the canvas, Lord. I'm the clay. Do you believe that God has your life in the palm of his hands? Do you believe that before he even, you even knew him or he knew you, that, or before you were formed in your mother's womb, that he knew you and he had a plan and a purpose for your life? Do you believe that? Or is your life coincidental and random? It's not. And I want to encourage you today, if that's what you've believed, if that's what the people around, around you have tried to convince you or the world or the lie of the enemy has tried to convince you with, I want you to know something today. That God loves you. He knows you. He is the author of your story. And he's not finished with us yet. Amen. How many are thankful for that? Man, this is just, this is just a chapter. And yes, we do cooperate with the Holy Spirit. We do. There are a lot of things that are being written in the story of our life right now that God is saying, will you trust me? Because you can. Will you trust in my purposes for your life that I will bring to completion the good things that I've started in you? Amen. How many have ever felt like you're not gonna get there? Anybody ever felt like that? Just like, man, Lord, I just keep bumping my head against the same wall. I keep making the same stupid mistakes. I'm just, I'm embarrassed about it at this point. I don't even want to talk about it. Anybody else felt like that besides me? Just me and Ray. Okay, Madison, thank you. That's my sister from another mister. When I mean get there, I'm not talking about heaven. I'm talking about God bringing us into completion, maturity. I want, I want to grow up. Amen. Amen. And I know that God has that for me. And I'm seeing that. I'm seeing that. I'm seeing changes even at this late stage of the game. Fourth quarter, fourth quarter, fourth quarter. <laughs> Amen. Probably like you, I have an accuser. Right? I mean, I don't, I don't know that we necessarily have like personal accusers. Um, but we have the accuser of the brethren, right? The enemy that wants to rob us of our joy, rob us of, of our faith, rub our nose in our mistakes, right? Bring to our remembrance things that, let's face it, on paper should have disqualified from the grace and love and mercy of Jesus. Anybody else? Like, I was a mess. Anybody ever just, like, remember, like, your past and just go, oh, Anybody just, I, oh, thank God, right? But he's a lie. The enemy's a liar. 
God is faithful in his purposes for you. Don't ever forget that. Keep believing that. Romans 8, 28, one of my favorite passages of scripture that reminds us that we know in all things God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. My worst mistakes, God has turned for my good. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> right? This is an upside down gospel. My worst mistakes, God has turned for my good and his glory. And his purpose in my life and yours will be fulfilled. He just calls us to not give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Let gratitude fuel your faith again. Have the, have the courage. Just pull open those sails. There's so much treasure in you, family. I look around this room. I love all of you so much. There's so much treasure in this room that is yet unmined, that has not been given away yet. Let gratitude be that wind that just that fills your sails carrying the blessing and the mercies and the treasure of God. The word promises us in Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Amen? That's what we need to remind ourselves of God's blessing. That's what we need to cultivate that heart of gratitude, right? God is faithful whether we are or not. God loves you even when you don't Feel a lot of love for him. He's only good. I wish I was faithful all the time. But God is faithful to complete in me the work of faithfulness and a whole list of other things that he's doing. Amen. Maybe you're here this morning. You just kind of feel, man, pastor, I just feel so disconnected from that right now. I just, I, I want it, I want it to penetrate. I want it to hit my heart in a, in a special way. But I just, man, I just feel like it's a little bit further away from me than I can reach. That's okay. Because again, he is faithful. I want to read something for you. You guys hear me talk a lot about an author named Bob Goff. He's one of my favorite authors. I've read every book that he's written so far. I'm gonna keep going. He says this, and maybe this is an encouragement for you today. If you're just kind of, uh, man. Like, I'm just, I, I hear you be, but I'm not quite there. Here's an encouragement for you. He says, I think God allows all of us to go missing a time or two. He doesn't lose us like we lose our keys or our phone, but he lets us get lost for a while if that's what we really want. And when we do, he doesn't pout or withhold his love the way that we probably would if someone totally ignored us or walked away from us. Instead, he pursues us in love. And rather, he goes with us as we find ourselves again. He always knows where we are. God isn't constantly telling us what to do as we search for ourselves either. Instead, he gently reminds us of who we are. Could I just encourage you today? Could I remind you of who you are to God? That you are a treasure to him. That he loves you unconditionally and completely. He delights in you. He actually, he's, he's excited about you. He's excited about the ways that you're growing. And right now, as soon as I say that, we think of the eight ways where we're failing. God is excited about the ways that you are growing. He's excited even about the ways, even this morning, that you've battled through how you feel to try to really get that touch from him that you need. He's excited about what he's doing in your life. And he wants you to know that he loves you and he's with you. Amen. So this morning, before I release this to table talk, I want to issue a challenge. If you're ready, say ready. ready. We've done this before, and I thought, I thought especially in, in light of the last 20 months, that we needed to do it again. We're going to do a gratitude challenge for the rest of this year. Amen. And so what I want to encourage you to do is starting today, I want to challenge you to a gratitude journal. Now, right then, at least 11 of the men in the room just turned me off. I just saw the curtain just draw down. You don't have to write something if you don't want to. You could put it on your phone. I'm just trying, Ray. I'm just trying just to, it's time to grow up. I'm just trying. 
Honestly, whatever works for you, whatever you're gonna do, do it. But here's the challenge. Here's the challenge, right? Is every day, everybody say every day. Every day. Okay. Every day between now and the end of this year, right? Every day I want you to write down three things that you're grateful for. Three things that you're grateful for. It could be a person in your life. It could be something, just a revelation of who God is in your life and what he's doing in you that day. It could be the sunrise. It could be the sunset. It could be your family. Whatever it is, every day, three things. Why three? Because two is too easy. No, three is important. There's a lot of good things that happened in threes. On the third day, right? Three things. And I want us to keep this. I want to, I want to who's, who's in, first of all? You, and if you don't want to be in, that's fine. Don't raise your hand. But if you're going to raise your hand, do it. Look, you could do it. You could do it, Tom. You got it. This is how we're going to... This is how we're going to activate our faith. Is we're going to not just feel and wait for the feels, but we're going to put some feet to it and we're going to cultivate. We're going to create a value system and a behavior around gratitude. Appreciation for all that is going on around us, the good, the blessings that we have, and an awareness to see it and to realize that we are a blessed people. Amen? It's gonna help us stay in touch with, to daily take inventory of the blessings of God. Again, I shared with you earlier that one definition of gratitude is actually praise. Many of us are good at praising God for the big things, but I think we could grow in praising God for the little stuff too, right? And some days it might just be a couple, two or three little things. And someday you might be sitting there writing three and the Holy Spirit says, don't stop. And you end up with 10 that day. What happens if I skip a day? Well, catch up, mustard. I'm sorry. I just, I feel like I just, I'm 75 years old standing up here. How many got that? Say amen. Okay. Here we go. One more quote, and I'm going to let you do table talk. Oh, here's something else. Here's something else. Here's something else. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if the Holy Spirit drops something into your heart that he, he wants to plant a seed of gratitude for that hasn't happened yet. Don't be surprised about that. In fact, that might be a regular, that might be a regular part of the trio there is I'm actually going to start praising God for stuff that I don't have yet that he hasn't done yet, but that he's promised me. I love what Mark Batterson, another one of my favorite authors, said. He says, faith is next level gratitude. Faith is thanking God before he does it. It's prophesying your praise. Come on, somebody. Faith is next level gratitude. Faith is thanking God before he does it. It's prophesying your praise. Are y'all ready for this? Man, God's going to just fill our sails with another revelation and awareness of his goodness that is all around us that we haven't been aware to see. Our spiritual self-awareness is going to go through the ceiling. Amen? Are you with me today, family? Come on. Everybody stand to your feet and just give God about 30 seconds of crazy praise. Come on. Tell him how much you love him. Don't stop there. Jesus, you're good. You're faithful. You're sovereign. Oh, thank you for peace and joy. Thank you for, for providing for our needs, God. You're worthy of praise every day for the rest of my life, whether you do anything for me again, God. You're so good. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We glorify you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on. We love you so much, God. We're so grateful for you, God. We're so grateful for you, God. Amen. Amen. Oh.